Okay, hi there. I'm hoping it works. This time it looks like it is. I can see everything behind me. Um, my name is Ellen. I'm with Flandrance Interiors. Um, we are doing part three of this little um, buffet today. This is an old Duncan Fife buffet. It's probably about 95 years old or so. And we're refinishing it. We've done parts one and two. They're on YouTube under Flandrance Interiors if you want to take a look at those. Today we're going to actually get to some painting, but I want to do some, I call it rustic blending. It's blending of paint, but it's more to make it look like it's really aged, like something you'd find in France in an old villa or something like that. Um, so I don't want it to be perfect blending. I want it to be a little bit of a grungy blending, but what I'm using for it is, um, I'm going to put my gloves on because it's going to get messy. I'm using a little bit of Algonquin. Algonquin is a fusion mineral paint. Hi there. Uh, color that is like sand. It's almost like sand. It's a uh, really pretty dark beige, I guess is how you would say it. I'm using as my base color raw silk. Um, I was going to do most of it in raw silk and then I just thought it was far too bright. So I'm going to use that. I've done um, two coats all over of raw silk so it has a good base on it already and then I'm I just picked up a little tiny sample bottle of chocolate I don't usually paint with the fusion mineral paint chocolate because I try to get away from brown but um, I picked it up because I'm going to use this as a highlight color um, and then blend those together to make a really nice aged look so I've got one door done one coat of how I want it there um, I'm just going to stand up so I can show you guys what I've been doing here. So that's one door done. Um, and that's only one coat. So each coat that I do with it, it's going to look more and more how I want it. I want it to be a really old French kind of washed out look. Um, like it's really, really old. And even though we're upcycling this piece, I still want it to look like an antique. So, but a fresh new antique. I've sanded everything again really, really well on the whole base. I filled in any cracks, any dings and nicks, any damage I filled in. Here you can see where I've done the raw silk. That's just the raw silk color. Same with up there. It's pretty bright. So I didn't want that. I want it to be more antique and rustic looking. So this is what we're working on today. Um, I don't think I'll get to the sides today. Um, during the live, but I'll do probably most of the front. Um, so what I did was I actually just rolled out the uh, base coat of the raw silk. So I just rolled out two coats. Um, and that gave it really good coverage to start with. So you want to always have a base coat. I could have done the um, Algonquin color as my base coat also. So that would have worked too. Hi there. Um, so what I've got, when you do blending, you have to use a separate brush, or it's actually better to use a separate brush for each color because if you don't, what happens is your, your brush becomes really dirty from the colors that you're putting on it. So I have one brush for raw silk, one brush for chocolate, one brush for Algonquin, and I have a blending brush. Um, I call it my fat brush. This is my blending brush and this blending brush, hi there, is actually, I think it's like a three inch round. It's pretty big. It's a little bit damp because I washed it out earlier. So I just keep drying it. And the blending brush, after you blend with it, you just keep drying it out, drying it out, drying it out. You want it to be really nice and dry. And then if it's not as dry as I like it, this is my two inch round or one and a half inch round that I just do a little bit of touching up with. So I've got my, my, I only need a small brush for the chocolates. This is my one inch flat. I've got a two inch flat for the white, the raw silk, and I've got a one and a half inch oval for um, the Algonquin, but you could do any of these colors with any of these brushes. And then there's my blending brush and you need a rag. So uh, the other thing to have with blending is a Mr. Bottle. So this bottle is a hairdressing Mr. Bottle. It just has a very fine mist of spray. So you don't want it to spray like a normal, normal uh, squirt bottle does because it'll be a little bit too much water coming out at once. You just want it to be pretty, uh, a pretty even and fine mist the whole 
um, time. And then you need a couple of good rags. Um, I wear an apron so I can wipe stuff all over myself, but um, a good rag just to wipe, keep wiping your, your uh, blending brush and also any paint. Get on. So I've painted, I'll show you here, I've painted the insides of these um, frames so that when the drawers are closed, you won't be able to see, you know, brown paint in there. You always want to paint the little bit of inside of the frame so it's nice. You don't have to paint the underside, but you do have to paint the top side. And I don't think you can see it right now. When we flip it up, you'll be able to see it. But I've painted the top side on each of these as well. And like I said, everything has one good coat of paint on it right now. So um, this color that I'm doing here, this blending, is a really nice antique look. So when I get to um, doing the, the big transfer that we're putting on, it's going to look really, really cool. And then we're going to do the handles, and I will do that and the transfer on the same day. So after we get this part all done, I'll be doing the transfer on in a day or so. I'll probably let this all dry a couple of days, actually, in between. I like my paint to be super dry before I try doing a transfer. So I've got this laying on its back right now because I find it easier to... Um, you know kind of go along with what I'm doing when it's, when it's laying down like this so rather than standing up I find it a little bit harder to paint when I'm standing when it's standing up so I'm gonna go ahead um, the first so right in here as you'll notice on the bottom I've got it kind of chocolate in here and that's how I want these to be too so I'm gonna put a little bit of chocolate over top of these rails here these uh, dividers and I'm hoping that you're low enough I guess you're low enough to see everything well yeah okay so <clears throat> it really doesn't take much I'm gonna just spritz my brush and what I've done is to make it really easy is I've put my three colors on a paint tray so that way I'm not dipping into paint bottles and getting my brushes really gross because you're dipping in and you really want just the tiniest bit of paint each time so what I'm going to do is just spritz my brush just a tiny little bit just to get it a little bit wet. And I'm doing that so it picks up just the tiniest little bit of the brown here. I just want a tiny bit of brown and pull it out. Okay, and then we're going to go in here and just the faintest bit of chocolate I want in here just to darken these up a little bit. Okay, so that's gone. Uh, let me see. I'm going to use a couple of wet wipes. Always keep your wet wipes really handy. Um, whoops, my wet wipes are stuck. I'm using um, baby wet wipes because they're wet. And they're really good cloth, so they're handy. I'm just going to wipe that excess brown off the very edges here a bit because I really don't want that there. So I've got some nice brown in here along like that and I'm going to wipe off anything I really don't want. Okay and then I'm going to go up to the next one and same thing if I can get some paint on here. I just want the tiniest hint of, of chocolate so if my brush wasn't a little bit damp at this point it might pick up way too much chocolate. So I want it to be damp because as I brush it on it's going to water it down and thin it out. And that's what I want. I just want it to be like a hint of a hint of chocolate in there because I want it to be darker than the actual um, cupboards here. All right, so I'm going to wipe that excess off the top rail and on the bottom rail. And that looks pretty good. It doesn't matter to me how imperfect it is because I really want it to look imperfect. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got one more reel up here. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer to what we're doing here. One more reel up here. And if you're watching this on the replay, that's super. I hope you're learning. Um, if you're interested in painting, share it with your friends. It would be great. Uh, and check out our YouTube page because these videos get sort of redone. Remixed a little bit 
and put onto YouTube and they are great for going back and learning if you want to learn. I think what I'm going to do is get the um, finished is for I'm going to show you guys a little bit about uh, doing decor on a buffet. I've actually seen some buffets lately that were really nice old antiques and they basically became junk heaps in someone's home. Like they literally were just piled with junk. And buffets are a classic piece of furniture and if you have one, feel privileged to have one. Oh, hi, you're back. <laughs> we had a little bit of a internet glitch there and it crashed on me, so I'm glad you're back. Um, so I'm just going up here to put some chocolate in and like I said, I don't want it to be perfect. This is going over the raw silk. So it's kind of, um, I'm just putting it in roughly and it's sort of hit and miss. So I'll show you in a minute, we'll stand this thing up. I'll show you what it looks like. It's really pretty though. Um, the chocolate over the raw silk, just putting it on with sort of a little bit of a damp brush here is really making it look um, antique and rich. It's really beautiful. Okay, so over here, I can see over here that I need a little bit of white in here, just a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm going to use my blending brush and blend that now because I don't want this to be pure white. Okay, that's good. It's really hit and miss and I like that. I'll show you in a little bit more what it looks like. And then same thing here. It needs to be a little bit more white in here. Um, blend this bit out. And put a little bit of chocolate back. It's just really going back and forth. Blending is just really back and forth, back and forth. That's all it is. Okay, so. I'm going to go over here now and I'm going to go into this rail here. I guess they're called divisions in your, your piece. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, but wherever the piece between the drawers is what I'm aiming for right now. Now, as I go along, if I get a little bit of paint in there, um, but when I'm doing the covers here, I'll just fix it up right on the spot so it's not left like that. So just a little bit in there, a little bit more up here. You see how that's going on there? It's really neat. Okay, and then I'm going to take my cloth and just wipe off this excess on the ridge here. So it's really rusticy. It's not a perfect blending job like you see on some, some people's pieces. Okay, so I am going to go in here. I'm going to take my brown. Actually, no. I'm going to take my um, Algonquin. I'm going to do a little tiny spritz. What you do with the water is just if you spritz it a little tiny bit, it... Um, it helps to uh, blend the paint out a little bit easier. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this Algonquin first. And like I said, this color is almost like sand. Okay. So that's first. And I'm going to go right into this cover here. So I'm going to put a little bit along the edge of this cover because we're going to be adding a layer into the cupboard. So as I'm doing this piece, I'm also starting that one. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the chocolate again, and I'm going to go right in these grooves, right along the grooves, and it'll mix. It'll get mixed up with the color I just put on the Algonquin, and that's fine. That's what we want. We want it to kind of get all screwed up together, because when it's all smoochy together, it actually looks really pretty when you blend it out. So I'm just going to take my blending brush and blend it just very gently like that. 
Okay, so let's go over to this one. I will do the same thing. Can you see that well? Yeah. So I'm going to start with the um, little tiny bit of water. Just a little bit. Don't want to get carried away with the water because if you do, you're just going to have a really sloppy mess to figure out. So just a little spritz of water. And we're going to put a little fine layer of Algonquin. Now I'm not going to put any in here right now because I've already done this door one coat. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the chocolate. And I'm going to go right in these grooves. So as I'm going in these grooves, I'm going over them, obviously, So, which is good because I want it to blend into the Algonquin. So I'm not worried about spilling over into the color I have on there, which is what we actually want. And then I'll take my blending brush and I'll blend it out. So you can see how... Um, it's starting to look pretty antique. Now, I am just like feather light touching this when I'm blending it out like that. Okay, so that's about the same, maybe a little bit darker than the other one, so I might blend it out a little bit more. Okay. And that's the thing, too, is you just keep, working it. You just keep going around and around and around and working it until you get it the way you really want it. Add a little bit of white. Tone it down a bit. And blend that in. So each layer that I do is going to make it richer and richer. And I'll probably do another full layer. Um, okay, now... Let's go to this door. All right. So this door, I'm gonna start with Algonquin. And I need a fair amount, but even still, it's a very, very small amount on your brush. It's not, there's no paint down to here. It's just a tiny bit on the end. So what I'm going to do is make an outline on this door now. So I'm going down and across. I'm just forming my outline. And as I do this, I'm not minding that I get in over here either. So I want this to be about the thickness of my brush. So if I keep my brush like that, I would like it to be about that thickness. So even if you use your brush as kind of a ruler, and up here, just even it out. Maybe a little bit wider here. And then down at the bottom, I need a little bit more paint. Try not to get myself in the road here. So and then I wanna look at the other side and see, is it about the same? Well, it looks to be. So I'm gonna take a little tiny feather light bit in here just to add a little bit of detail, a little bit of depth in there. And then I'm going to take my chocolate. And honestly, this whole thing will use about a tablespoon of chocolate paint. So that's why I got the, um, the uh, little pot of it, because I don't really paint with the chocolate, but I have to say the chocolate Fusion Mineral Paint is a gorgeous color. It's very, very rich. I guess whatever you call that, espresso, maybe. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit to the edge there. A little bit in here, a little bit in there. And I'm not really caring how well I put it on right now. Um, I just don't want any blobs or runs. And then I'll take a little bit of the white. And I'm going to put it in here. Just kind of randomly, and I'm going to go right to the edge here. Bring it up there a little bit, down here a little bit. So I'm creating a new border with it. Now, if I left it like that, it would look really odd. So this is where your uh, blending brush comes in. If I find that it's not blending with my brush, 
which it's okay. But if I found it wasn't, I would just spritz my brush a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. So let's go, we'll go all the way up to the top. And I am getting it into my rail up here and I don't care. That's gotta be blended too. So I'm blending it into here. And then we're gonna go down to the bottom, blend it crosswise. And then back up. Okay, so you can see in here, it hasn't blended, right? You can see right in here, it hasn't blended. So all I need to do is spritz my brush and go back and spritz. you could even spritz the whole thing but just reconstitute the paint a tiny bit and because this is my first coat on this door I'm not too worried about it blending perfectly because with each um, layer of blending you do it blends. and then you can go this way if you like blend it on a little bit better and then back up all right so that is, it might look yucky <laughs> right now, um, but it's drying and it's uh, what I want is a really aged look. So you could do that sort of look, I guess, with wax, but I wanted to do it with paint because I can't wax until um, I get my transfer on and I want the transfer to be uh, on paint. You can't put a transfer on um, you can't put a transfer on wax because it won't stick. So let's go here now. I'm going to go spritz it a little bit. Put the Algonquin on. Okay, a little bit of Algonquin. And then a little bit of chocolate. And I want the chocolate to go right in these grooves, mostly, to deepen those uh, grooves there. Okay. And then I'll take my, I think I'll add a little bit of white because I think it's it's got quite a bit of, of uh, chocolate on it, a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna add some random white and what I'd actually like to do is have the bottom here a little bit darker. So I'm going to add some chocolate right in here and pull it up like that. And then we'll take our blending brush and start to blend and see how well it blends. And, you know, honestly, I'm not even worried about... Um, brush strokes, although I'm so feather light doing this that I, I, you know, there are really no brush strokes. It's just smooth as smooth can be. I'm going to put a little bit more chocolate in here. Now, next time I do this, I'll do this same thing again. And then at the very end, I'll be putting some wax in there to just darken up all of these grooves in here as well. Okay. Okay, so that's that. And then I'll just go into the door here a little bit and smooth it out. Now, like I said, this looks not perfect yet, but it's actually the look I want. <laughs> um, that's, I think, pretty close to how I would love it to be after the second coat is done because I think it'll look really nice and rustic. Okay, I'm just touching up a little bit along the bottom here. If you want to see that, straight along the bottom here. Again, leaving it a really neat rustic look. And I'm doing that on purpose. I'm not doing it by accident. Um, I just want it to look really, really, really aged. I think that looks pretty cool. So the first, the first coat of blending you do is always going to be a little weird. You just do it again and do it again. Usually it's about three coats with blending and that's after a base coat. 
So down here, um, I've done a little bit of blending along the bottom, but I think I will give it another go here. I think I will try it. So I'm going to clean my brand new blending brush because it's getting a little bit mucky. And I will smoosh it around, clean it up. Okay, so at the bottom here, we want to spray it a little bit. I'm just going to do some touching up. I'm not going to do too much. Just adding a little bit more color in here. So I didn't even put any paint on my brush. I'm just, I spritzed the, the wood with a bit of water and that's enough to allow the paint that I already have on my brush to blend into here. Okay. And then I'll put a tiny, tiny bit of some water on my chocolate brush and then put a little tiny bit of chocolate back in here, right at the base. And just kind of randomly pull it up into here because I want it to look like old yucky wood. So I go like that, old yucky wood. And then I'm going to blend it out a little bit. So it's just Perfect for blending. And actually, when you use these really smooth, big fat brushes for blending like this, it literally um, creates like a sheen. It's just the smoothest paint. It's weird, but it's a pretty cool thing. The, the paint just self smooths. It's just beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Oh, put a little bit in here. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding a bit of a barnwood look on top of this rustic look. I'm just adding a tiny little bit of um, browns, chocolate browns, which my brush never picks up. I don't want to get too much on my brush, so that's why I'm being careful. Okay, so let's quickly Blend that out. I'm just going to put a bit, tiny bit of water on my brush. Is there a dog outside? I don't know who it is. Okay, so you can see how that wood look is coming up there now. So this is starting to look really aged. And that is what I want. Because I want it to look like a really old piece. So I'm going to leave that to dry because it's pretty much how I want it. There. What do you guys think so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's tackle some stuff here. Um, I'm going to put some of the drawers in and let's see how far we can get here. I'm not sure which drawers go where, but I'll try. It's just super easy to paint with drawers out. I mean, I mean with the drawers, when you're blending, to paint with the drawers in. Uh, it's much nicer, more even. Like you can see the big difference between the um, the raw silk and the age look that I'm going for. So it's really starting to take shape. Okay, so this is the last drawer. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so we'll do the same process. I'm going to do the perimeter with Algonquin. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of chocolate and a little bit of that raw silk in the middle and blend it. So let's do this. Looking pretty good so far. Let me know what you think. And um, then tomorrow or the next day, we'll have this up on YouTube. So if you missed it tonight, you can watch it whenever. 
And I would really, really appreciate it if you would share these videos with your paint friends or people who are learning about decor, things like that, because um, I, I'm really trying to build up my viewership on my Facebook and YouTube right now. Okay, I need to just spritz my brush a bit because it's not picking up enough paint properly. And again, I can use this as my guide for measurement. So that's exactly the width of the brush if I want to do that. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But if you wanted to get a really even border of paint, that is one way to do it. It's pretty easy. Just always use the wide side or the flat side of your brush as your paint thing. Okay. And I'm going to put a little bit in the middle because I want it to blend that raw silk out a little bit. And then brush or chocolate. I need to have an apron with pockets that I can put things in. So I just want a little bit of this chocolate again. Okay, and we're going to go around the edge of chocolate. And that will deepen this edge up and then we'll blend it out. Okay. Spin in there a little bit more. So that's pretty messy and that's fine. Once we start blending, it sort of pulls things a little bit better together. And I'm just going to put a little bit of raw silk back in here. And I'm going to go right up into the Algonquin and sort of define my line where I want my line to be a little bit. Okay. Okay, now we'll blend that out. And I'm going to give it a tiny spritz because I can see it's pretty dry. And I'll just blend. And I'm not worried if I go a little bit into this rail here because I can clean it up right after. But we'll just blend, blend, blend. This paint blends pretty good. You just have to use um, different brushes. Keep your brushes separate. And... Make sure everything is wet. If you try to blend on anything dry, it's really kind of a disaster. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit more of the white. And this is the first coat, so it's not going to cover perfectly like you might like it to cover. It's going to take two coats for all these colors to properly show. And possibly even three coats. So if you're doing a first coat and you get it kind of looking a little wonky or your edges or your, you know, where you want it to be blended doesn't look exactly right, the second coat should smooth it out. So I'm not going to worry about that. All I want is my nice base coat on, which is what I have right now. Okay, so I'm going to go up to, down to this one and I'm going to give it, you see they're very good. I'm going to give it a little spritz of water because it's really dry. And then I'm going to put the Algonquin on. And I'm going to go again. Make a frame with the paint. Go again. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. You're just trying to get your paint kind of on there. One thing about blending, um, if you're blending or you want to do blending, you kind of have to use colors that are similar uh, in order for it to blend properly because if it's like diabolically opposed to um, the colors you're using, it's going to look really kind of funny. It's not going to blend as well unless you're doing something like a boho look and then you can use any old colors you want but blues greens um grays tend to blend super well together and 
um, reds, yellows, and oranges blend really well together. Um, grays, blacks, creamy browns like this blend really nicely together. Um, pinks, fuchsias, hot pinks, even reds and purples blend well together. So you really just have to use your head and, and kind of stay within a similar color range unless you're doing something like boho because boho you can get away with anything really. Boho is just a mix of random colors um, that kind of look like they belong together but they're just you can literally throw a paintbrush at a cabinet and call it boho it seems like. So that's my first coat of that one and it's not perfect but it's getting there. So you can see the brown here, you can see the brown and the white there. So next time when I do this, um, you know what I didn't do? I knew there was something missing and I couldn't figure it out, but I forgot my chocolate. You see the difference the chocolate makes? <laughs> so that was kind of silly. I kind of kept thinking there was something I was missing. Let's do that because boy, that makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Pull it off there. Uh, I'm going to go in a little bit more. I'm trying to keep my borders kind of similar with the colors. Okay, that makes more sense to me. Perfect. I can't believe I did that. I'm just going to spritz my blending brush a bit because it's terribly dry. Just a tiny bit. I'll blend this out. Um, at this point, I would be careful, and I should be careful, of not spritzing the actual cabinet because it's going to leave spots on the painted bits here. Okay, that's better. A little bit better. I missed a spot there. And there. So again, this is the first coat. So the next coat I do, I'll just make, I'll deepen wherever it seems kind of light and keep going like that. Okay, so we'll go up top and we're gonna do these ones. So same thing, a little bit of spritz there. You can either spritz your brush or your, um, your brush or your piece, but like I said, if you've got paint down here, you don't want to be spritzing onto the paint you just did because it'll pull it off a little bit. So just be careful. I'm kind of used to it, so I can be a little bit more careful, but it'll be really pretty. When we get the uh, transfer on here, the transfer is in uh, dark charcoal gray. Um, it's a really beautiful French style transfer and I really like it so it's going to be pretty neat. Okay, enough. so let's get some chocolate and some white on there, read some stuff. Okay, This is a, a purposeful antique look. And this could be achieved with, I would suppose, with uh, glaze or antiquing wax. But I want to do it with paint. I like blending paint, I think it's fun. It's kind of interesting, it's kind of challenging. Kind of everything. Okay, a little bit of white in there, the raw silk. So this is raw silk, Algonquin, and um, chocolate. All fusion mineral paint colors. And that is what we have. What there. Six my brush. If you get one of these big fat brushes, um, this is just a 
like a big fat waxy brush kind of brush. But if you get one of these brushes, um, just keep it strictly for blending. Don't use it for anything else. And then you'll always have a really nice blending brush. I just love this brush. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, one more drawer. That is really cool. I love how this looks. Let me know what you guys think. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? It'll be a pretty piece. So one more round of this stuff that we do. And I've probably used about one tablespoon of the Algon Algonquin Raw Silk each to do all this blending. Um, and I've used about a teaspoon of chocolate so far. So it really takes the tiniest, tiniest bit of paint. Just go over top there just to give it a bit of depth. And then we'll put the chocolate on. And give it more depth. Oh, it's not picking up. Okay. Um, and I'm using three different brushes, one for each color paint, because I don't want my paint. If I used the same brush for all three colors, it would just like a big look like a big muddy mess right about now. So this way, it um, it gives you very distinct colors with each brush that you put on. So it's you have to use the three colors, or not the three colors, but a different brush for every color that you do use. Okay, I'm gonna blend that out with my. A blending brush and I'm gonna spritz it a little bit. It's getting kind of tacky in here. When that happens, paint gets tacky. Okay. So that is the first coat. So I can see already that the middle is a little bit darker than that. So the next round I do, I'll put um, probably not even just a trace of chocolate on. And I'll whiten this up and I'll darken this a little bit so it all matches a lot better. Uh, but I think it's starting to look pretty neat. There's a couple of drawers here. When you do this and your, your piece is down on the ground, um, like flat, flat, sitting upright, I find it really hard to blend. It's like my eyes won't work. <laughs> uh, they just won't get things in my brain properly for some reason. So, um, I figured this out once upon a time that if I just tip my piece back and look at it from this angle it makes much more sense to me and then it actually kind of worked so i do this when i have a big piece of any kind i just do this exact same thing tip it over kind of learn the hard way and then i'm sort of looking like down at it properly um instead of instead of uh, on a weird front way view, front view. So yeah, I do not want this to be too dark either. I want it to be light, but you have to get this paint on like you, there's just no two ways around it sometimes. So if it seems dark right now, it's easily lightened up with the next round. <clears throat> okay, where's my blending brush? I shall blend this out. Can you see that well? Mm. 
Okay. And then just any overage, I just clean up as I'm going along there. Let me put a little bit more weight there. too much darkness up there. Okay, and then we have one more to do right there. So we'll do, and this is how I look when I paint. <laughs> this is exactly how I look. I have this tripod of stuff and then my water bottle and then my fluff brush or whatever else. <laughs> and that is literally how I go around painting. It's kind of funny. It's a little bit, I just find it frustrating to keep picking up brushes, so I just hold them around like this. Okay, so Algonquin. Blend it into the middle of it. Put on some chocolate. These big fat uh, three inch round, I think they're just like a chalk brush or something. They're just super for blending, super. I love them. A little light there. So. so wherever it's lighter than the rest, I have to pick an area where I, where I like the tone, right? That I've done. And then I need to go back figure out what tone I like. So for instance, uh, the middle right now to me seems too dark. It's not the color that I want. That seems too light. That seems about right, this one here. Um, so I'll probably aim for something like that and I'll go back and redo this whole thing. I'll let it dry really, really well go back and do the whole thing and then lighten it up so that it's all pretty much a similar um, antique look like that. So that's going to be pretty neat and then once I get that done I'll come back on. The sides will be done the exact same way. I'll put the Algonquin on, I'll make a frame, I'll outline it with chocolate, I'll put some raw silk in the middle and I'll blend out the whole side. So the sides will be exactly the same this is. As this dries, it's going to get darker. Um, so I'll let it dry and then I'll see what the true color is because I can't really tell from right now because the paint is wet. I can't really tell what the true color is going to be. So that is it for tonight. Um, and I will come back on when this is all done and we'll put the transfer on and we'll do the handles and we'll get it completely done. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.